We're going on a road trip. Hello everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I thought I would take you all along for something that is a little bit more exciting for me. I'm going on a road trip by myself just to go have a stay and get some time and space and perspective. The last time I filmed a sort of vlog type video, it was similar, but I was taking a day for myself. Now I'm going somewhere to spend some time. I'm thinking about two or so weeks and I thought it would be nice to maybe share my experience, speak to some things when I get there. I'd love to share the decks and books that I'm bringing. I do have a sort of plan with the decks and books and the type of studying that I want to engage in while I'm away, but I thought it would be nice to take you all along and share some of it. I do have this thing going on in my mind where I feel like I have to share something of substance that's either educational or an idea or something that can help somebody in some way when I'm creating a video and that that equates to my worth or value in the community or when I put something out there and that really isn't the case. I think I should just feel like I am enough as I am and so sharing something more casual where you're along for the ride with me might help to I would say break that down a little bit for myself, so hopefully this is more exciting than just me driving. I hope I can intersperse it with things that are exciting. I like to push myself sometimes in ways that are uncomfortable, but hopefully incite some sort of growth. For me, I am very true to my Sagittarius sun sign. I love to travel, I love to not have a lot of ties on me at any given time, and I definitely like a lot of alone time. I need that quite often, so a lot of this is basically what I'm doing right here and I have traveled quite a bit on my own but in some ways this is a new experience for me. I've done longer road trips, I've done road trips by myself, I've traveled and flown and gone to other places alone by myself for extended periods of time but I've never done a multiple day road trip by myself where I have to make stops so this is something for me that feels exciting and fun. I know on my last vlog I believe it was where I was I, for a period I was in the woods walking, somebody expressed a little bit of concern, really, really wonderful and sweet, uh, just asking me that, asking if anybody knew where I was or making sure that I was safe. And people do know where I'm going. This is not unsafe. I'm not just picking up and going. That is something I would do a lot when I was younger. So I've grown. I've grown significantly in that way. I do account for the people that I care about and people do have my location. But I thought that this would be, it's very necessary. I think I'm not getting the amount of space that I need and I feel really lucky to have the opportunity or just the ability to go somewhere by myself on this sort of road trip excursion and get that perspective and space. I haven't been feeling as creative or inspired in my work. And by the way, I may be away, but you can definitely still book readings with me. I have my laptop. I plan to be working in that capacity at least, although I won't be doing my workshops and in, in person readings in the shop as I would, but I am going to be working in terms of, of readings that are remote. So do feel free to book those, but I haven't been feeling as inspired. I have been feeling more burnt out. I do want to reevaluate some things in my life in terms of what I want, where I want to go, and how I want to get there. But first, I really want to have a few of the, the milestones and destinations in mind and then maybe chart a course once I'm more sure about that. So without further ado, we'll get to the driving. I have about nine hours ahead of me today, so we'll see and I'll check in hopefully sporadically in a way that's hopefully entertaining also. I have an audiobook on astrology, which is something I want to study more while I'm away. I have never really fully went through or listened to an audiobook. I love to read, as you all may know. I, I love the act of reading a physical book visually, but audiobooks never grab my attention. I can't really do podcasts. I always end up just tuning out and not absorbing the information. So we'll see if I'm able to listen to this four and a half hour or so audiobook on astrology. I do have some music playlists. Usually I like to drive either with music that fits my mood, that lets me kind of think, or in silence. I actually really enjoy driving in silence where I get to be alone with myself and just think and be in my head. 
So we'll see what happens. I'll check in with you all. And oh, tonight is the pink moon at the day of filming this. And I'm bringing my travel altar, which is something I'm very excited about. When I get there, I plan to make a video about how I use it, how it's evolved, all of those fun things. Maybe I'll break it out tonight at the hotel. Not as mystical and magical, I know, but maybe I'll feel compelled to do something for, for the pink full moon, which I believe is in Scorpio. Correct me if I'm wrong. And if you're watching this, I mentioned I'm a Sagittarius sun sign, um, a Gemini rising, and a Libra moon. Please leave below if you feel comfortable doing so, your big three. I'd be curious to know whoever's watching this, because I know a lot of you to, to a lesser or more degree. I'd love to know what your, your big three are, astrologically speaking. But without further ado, I'm going to get driving, and I'll check in with you all in just a bit. Update, everyone. Some gas has been put in the car. We are about halfway through the first day's portion, so four and a half hours deep, somewhere around Richmond, Virginia. I stopped and got some, some Chick-fil-A, a spicy chicken sandwich. I did wind up uh, listening, I almost wanted to say reading, listening to the entirety of the audiobook. It was the complete, I believe it was the complete guide to astrology by Louise Eddington. I'll put it on the screen or list it down below or something like that. It was interesting as somebody who's never really listened to an audiobook or been able to get through one. I would say I didn't hate it, but it wasn't my favorite medium for listening for digesting information, I should say. I think I'm going to stick to reading books the old-fashioned way. I don't think I absorbed the information properly. I mean, I know probably like a a very data-heavy type of text is not ideal for audiobook anyway. It's just kind of like a extemporaneous lecture where I'm not taking notes, but at the same time, I think I absorb information a lot better when I'm visually reading, I take my time, I'm not trying to multitask. I think that's part of the joy I get from reading is that I'm taking very specific silent time and allocating all of my mental energy to that one thing, whereas with audiobooks, you are probably trying to do multiple things and thus not really listening fully. It feels weird to even say I listened to a book as opposed to read a book, but I think I'm going to switch back to music for the second portion of today. I'm heading for, what is it, Florence, South Carolina, I believe is where I'm stopping for the night, for tonight, and then having a shorter drive for the duration of tomorrow till I get to my final destination. Thought I would get on the road with that, but I would say I do recommend the book. I know it's also offered in written format. I think it might be better suited to be read that way. I think the information was great. I think it covered the gambit of the various beginner topics, things like aspects and planets, houses, signs, what else? It went into more depth, I would say, on other planetary bodies as well, which I thought was helpful, and various types of astrology, like Hellenistic versus what else? Vedic and, and Eastern forms of astrology, which I thought was helpful and other things like that. So I would say I do recommend it. I don't think it was a bad audiobook. So if you like audiobooks, maybe it's one for you. For me, not so much. I know the background, it's not very visually pleasing to watch someone on a road trip because you're just seeing essentially the same thing each time. But I've, I'm parked in a parking lot. I'm gonna continue the drive and I will check in later. All right, everyone, so I have made it to the hotel. Thankfully, that was quite the day of driving. I bit off a little bit more than I could chew with that, but thankfully I saved it so that I have less time to drive tomorrow. I don't know about anybody else, but when I'm doing something, I tend to try to put the break that I take in the middle more towards the end, so that way by the time I've done that, I feel like everything's a lot more reasonable, and when I'm low energy toward the end of a goal, I can get to the end a lot quicker. I don't know if that makes sense. Kind of like if you have to take a halfway break, but you push it more towards the end. That's what I usually do with anything, and it works for me, or at least it keeps my morale high for the second half, the shorter half, I guess you could put it. I think I'm just gonna call it a night and read a bit of my novel, although I guess I technically read a book in the car or listened to a book, but I'm reading A People's History of the Vampire Uprising, a novel by Raymond a Valeri? Valerial? I've noticed that I'm attracted to books that have red covers the last month or two. If you go back and look, so many of the books I've read, and just the color red in general, here's some red, 
whatever reason, the color red is surrounding me a lot, and that's never been a color I gravitate toward, but I've been unconsciously selecting red things lately, so I will have to look into that. I am here in Florence, South Carolina. I'm thinking about it, and actually it's, well, first of all, it's nothing like Flor Florence, Italy, that's the first thing, but on top of that, one of the, the first times I stayed by myself was actually in or traveled by myself, I should say, was in Florence, Italy, and now here I am in Florence, South Carolina, so I guess there's a bit of a parallel there that I hadn't thought about before. But first day of travel done, I'm not going to go through the decks and all the things that I brought now because they're still packed away, but when I get to my destination tomorrow, we're going to go through everything, and I think that'll be a really fun time. It's rather late, I'm going to turn it in I will check in with you all tomorrow for the next leg of the journey. made it. So here I am. I refrained from filming any more of the driving portions or stops. I didn't think that would be helpful. There wasn't much I had to say. I really just wanted to get through the driving and it was a lot of driving more than I, I think have ever done on my own in one condensed period. So something for me to consider in the future when anticipating a road trip or something like that and how much and how taxing that is. Today I mostly just listen to music. I definitely feel like I could recite most of Nicki Minaj's songs, Missy Elliott's songs, so if anybody out there wants to challenge me to a rap battle, I'm ready. But without further ado, I thought I would just share with you all the things that I brought. This is not a very minimalist packing type of situation because I had my car, I could bring more with me, and given the fact that I don't know how long I'm going to be staying, exactly. I wanted to account for anything that I might want if I'm here for a prolonged period of time. So the one that you've already seen is my travel altar. I'm not going to pick through it right now because I do want to make a video on where it's at and then also how I'm using it in practice. But the travel altar made its way here. Another one that I'm not going to share too much on because I do have a video idea for this is my kind of tarot on the go kit, a very more minimalist style of tarot on the go. I am not a minimalist by any means. I'm more actually of a maximalist, unfortunately, as much as I would like to be a minimalist, but I can be one when I need to be. And that's what that tarot on the go kit is really about when you want a lightweight portable thing. More to come on that. The decks that I brought, and I brought, last time I came here, I actually only took the Thoth with me. And that's because I flew and I didn't have a lot of space and I really was seeking more of a minimalist type of experience or I didn't want clutter, I didn't want my mind to kind of be spread out amongst many things. This time is different. So the decks that I have are, I brought one copy of the Thoth and this copy is the Greenie. I think it's just my favorite personally to work with. So when considering which one I wanted to bring, I decided and landed on this one. So there's that as the first deck. The other tarot deck or decks I have, let's see. I brought, I actually brought a couple different types of Marseille, mostly because that's where my studies are at now. So I have reasons for why I brought each one. So I'll explain uh, this one here. This is the Dodal by Cartogram in the linen cardstock. This one is really easy to shuffle. It's nice, it's fluid, it's portable. I'm not super concerned about this one getting damaged or anything like that. It is somewhat easily replaceable. And I think that this is a good one potentially for clients as well. And I think it's just very soothing to use as far as the, the way it handles, I guess you could say. And of course there might be a study portion to this, but really the one that I brought to personally use and study and nitpick through and just look at the imagery is this version of the Dodal. And yes, I brought another version, but it's just where I'm at with my tarot practice. This is the one by uh, Sullivan Heisman. 
and this is, I think it's more of like the, the hand printed ones. I think the first edition is now out of print or out, it ran out, but I think there might be further print runs to come. But the cardstock is wonderful, the colors are really great, and the lines are sharper than the cardigram one. So this one I think will be better for me in terms of picking out the details, studying the deck when it comes to that. So, plus it's not one I can riffle shuffle and the edges are sharp, sharp. So I have to be more conscientious and take my time with this one. Whereas the cardigram one, I can shuffle really quickly. And usually if I have the option to do something quickly, I will. If I have a tool or an object or a product that forces me to take my time, I will then take my time and sometimes I need to take my time and that's why this was really a choice in that way. Then next I have, I brought the Midnight deck. This one I've just really been identifying with lately. I enjoy the feeling that it gives me and so I thought, you know, there wasn't really a rhyme or reason to it other than the fact that I just enjoy it a lot currently. And then the final two decks I brought which aren't tarot decks are the Holistic Astrology Cards for Guidance, Forecasting, and Healing by Carney Zor. And I've spoken about these before. I will use these when somebody books a reading with an astrological add-on. And I also said I want to d uh, delve deeper into astrology while I'm here in a way as, a, as I guess my studies go, as far as studies go. So I brought these cards. And then I also brought just a pack of playing cards or deck of playing cards, the Pagan playing cards by Usi. I always show this case with the deck in it, but yeah, that's the one that I brought. And now as far as books go, I already showed this one, the novel I'm reading, the vampire book. I can't get enough of those. I've read, I read actually a couple sort of dystopian sci-fi novels lately that were unintentionally about vampires that I didn't realize until I started reading them. This one, of course, I realized in picking it up because the title includes the word vampire. But the other books that I brought are the ABCs of Astrology, A Beginner's Guide to Becoming Your Own Astrologer. I still like to read beginner books. I find that they're really helpful and the way that others approach baseline topics for me helps to helps me to create a composite picture of how others may view certain things. It, it, that's just how I work. So I picked this one up. This was actually on Queen Osset's list of, of astrology books in terms of trying to diversify your bookshelves. This one really caught my eye and so I ordered it and arrived right before my trip. So I'm planning on reading this one while I'm here. Another one that I definitely plan on reading while I'm here is Camellia Elias's Read Like the Devil. I've read her other book and now I'm on to this one. So definitely going to be one I'm reading while I'm here. And then two that I just decided to bring just because in case I get to them, I have using the holistic astrology cards for Carnizor's deck. This, I actually never had the book. I've had the deck for I think two years now, never got the book, finally got the book. And so I wanted to have it around for me to reference and potentially just read through so I get a better understanding of her intentions in making the deck, aside from just what I, I gleaned from it as a user. And then I also brought The Elements of Spellcrafting by Jason Miller. And this is one, oh, and did I mention, did I mention the authors of all of these? This is by Raymond Valerio. And the astrology book is by Dirisha Mack. But I've seen so many channels talk about this book in particular. And I think it's more of just a way of approaching spellcraft, but it seems a little bit more practical and it breaks things down in a way that is very user friendly. So I figured if I get to it, I get to it. If I don't, I don't. But I brought that one just in case. And then as far as, oh, sorry, the air conditioning is coming on. I hope that's not too distracting. The other things that anybody watching this might even be remotely interested in, obviously I'm not going to share things like clothing and whatever else I needed to bring as far as essentials, but I brought the journal that I've been using that I showed recently, my sketchbook sort of journal. I also brought this astrology journal because I have been meaning to crack it open and actually use it. Sometimes when you have those nicer journals, you don't want to use them because you don't want to mess it up. It has really almost like 
almost like a linen type pages. My f a friend got it for me for my birthday now, two years ago, and I have been intending to write in it in regards to my astrology studies, and since I'm doing that now, hopefully I will actually put the pen to paper with this one. And then I have just this little mini one, which I thought would be fun for observations and maybe doodles and drawings. This is by Midori. And I'm not going to go too deep into this, especially this next one, mostly because they in are involved in my tarot on the go kit type thing. So there's also this, this journal by the same brand. And I will speak more to that when I go through my, my minimalist tarot on the go kit. But that about sums up anything. Oh, and as far as the writing utensils go, because I have been having a sort of craving to, to draw and create, I guess, more artistic type images in my journals. I have these almost like shades of gray and such uh, brush pens. So I have those along with some, some pens that are more for drawing purposes. And yeah, I, I thought that those would be fun to use and encourage me to actually use use my journals and I already had them sort of lying around and really needed to actually break them open and get into using them. So I brought those as well. That about sums up all of that. I've made it. I don't really know how exciting this idea of a vlog was, but hopefully there was something helpful or informative or just interesting to watch amidst all of the, the jumbled bits of footage. Really what I want to get away from, although I, I love sharing things that are have a topic, I have a point to make, I, do, I don't want to, I would say, box myself into feeling like that's the only thing I can create or the only thing that's of value. I said that in the beginning. So that's something I'm trying to steer away from or for myself, for my own sake. So that way I can feel a lot better about just being a part of a community and having my voice out there without there needing to be a reason or something of use that it can do for somebody. So that's that, but I'm here. I may film some more stuff while I'm going, I have ideas for actual videos to film while I'm here. I may film my just life while I'm here. I'm not sure there's much going on that'll be exciting. So we'll see. I hope you are all well. Like and subscribe if this was fun or interesting or you wanna hang out and hang around for something like this in the future. And until next time, bye.